Rightio, it is time to head into the chat room and joining me today is Nine's Jessica Braithwaite in Adelaide and Shelley Horton from Nine Honey in Sydney. Hi. Happy Friday to both of you. <laughs> Hi, happy Friday. Hi. Well, it is the festive season and time to be merry with many enjoying a Christmas tipple or ten. But you would think <laughs> twice. But would you think twice if you knew how many kilojoules were in your drink of choice? Well, in a fresh call for mandatory labels on alcoholic drinks, Consumer Group Choice has revealed the kilojoule count for a bounty of bevies. For example, opting for a glass of sparkling wine over a sweet wine could save you 200 kilojoules. Shelley, what do you think? Are you all for this? I am all for this because I make terrible choices when I'm drinking. <laughs> I'm the one who'll go, yeah, I'll have the Toblerone with Baileys and extra cream. So I actually think that if I had the calories or kilojoules on the bottle, that I would make better choices. And now that I've read more about this, it's, I'm all about the Aperol Spritz this Christmas because it's so much lower. It's genius. And you can drink more. You can drink more. <laughs> but just because because it's you're saving kilojoules, then you're drinking you know, more alcoholic, I guess. Is that a yes. good or a bad thing? Well, it depends on what your family Christmas is like. But for some of us who need to self-medicate their way through it, then it's fine. <laughs> Jess, um, what do you think? I mean, I can see why highlighting the alcohol content is important, but do we really need energy labels? I mean, we know Ugh. that out drinking alcohol is not healthy for us. Yeah, and I can tell you who's not going to be the most popular person at the Christmas party, and that's the person who's going, did you know that glass of wine has 4,000 kilojoules in it? I'm, I'm, I'm a bit the opposite to you, Shelley. I think I, d I don't want to know. I think kilojoules are a bit of a killjoy, and I think we've, you know, I've worked hard enough this year. We all have. We deserve to have a few champagnes over Christmas with our mates without having to worry about how many kilojoules are in their alcohol content. Very good. Good to know. Always uh, good to know that one, and it can affect uh, wherever the night goes. But I think the kilojoules is a bit of overkill. Well, I guess we, you know, we are all very health conscious these days, but it's all about True. moderation, isn't it? I did remember hearing once, though, that a bottle of white wine is equivalent to um, eating a loaf of bread. Whoa. Oh, wow. Yeah. Don't okay. know if it's correct, but <laughs> you know what? I know which one I'd rather right now. <laughs> Especially on a Friday. Yeah. <laughs> okay, from one vice to another, and does Botox help boost your career? Well, apparently more people are opting for Botox to climb the corporate ladder, helping them fight ageism in the workplace. Shelley, when it first came out 15 years ago, it was a bit of a taboo, but now for some, it is just part of their beauty regime, like getting a facial. You are a proud Botox user, so what do you reckon? Has it helped your career? Oh, look, I would hate to think that anyone is getting Botox to progress their career or to combat ageism within uh, the workplace. But I can tell you, for me, it just makes me feel better. Like, my <laughs> face is basically botulism and filler. Like, there's no <laughs> flesh left. But I'm also a big believer, and if you're going to do that, just say it. You know, I'm heading off to get some, my Botox yeah. topped up this afternoon because I realised I could frown. I've been getting it for 10 years, and the thing that I find is it just means that my outside matches my inside because I'm not actually very grumpy. I'm a pretty happy person. <laughs> and so when I'm not frowning, it shows both ways. Yeah, if it makes you feel good. I mean, Jess, I've never had it, but I certainly don't judge those who do. But I do think it's very sad that people feel they need to use it in order to snare that dream job. Do you think society's yeah. becoming too superficial? I think, I think that's the point, exactly what you've made there, is that, of course, I mean, no, I'm not going to judge if you want to get Botox, it's your own face, go your hardest, uh, but I think it, if it's that, that pressure, if people feel like they're under pressure that they really need to inject what is essentially, you know, a poisonous toxin into, into your face so that you can <laughs> remain relevant Close in the ears, workplace. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Shelley. No, uh, you know, for it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I love that you're owning it, though, because you're going, look, I'm going to do it this afternoon, and that's great, because I think if people do it and are quite private about it, then we get into this really murky oh, realm yeah. of setting really unrealistic expectations. Like, we're humans, we you will, we yeah. get older. You, you know? will never hear me saying my face is like this because I wear a lot of sun, sunscreen and yeah. drink water. That's yeah. just lying, people. Yeah. No, it it's takes like, it's I not fair. Dr. Joseph Heike putting lots of needles into me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, I think we all agree on one thing, and that is if you do get Podox, then don't hide it. Just yeah. say that you do. It's hard to hide it because you can't <laughs> frown. <laughs> You can't raise your eyebrows. <laughs> See, I don't get Botox. <laughs> Give us a go, Shelley. Are you... Oh, you getting it this afternoon? This yeah, afternoon I'm going to do, do. <laughs> Okay, ladies, we're going to take a quick break and come back to you in a moment. But first, it's time to say goodbye to Western Australia viewers. 
For everyone else, stay with us. Coming up next in the chat room, Fashion Fail, the website under fire for this ad campaign. And what the Queen buys for Christmas? Is she on to a good thing? Let's go straight back into the chat room with Jessica Braithwaite and Shelley Horton now to a fashion website that's been slammed for using thin models to advertise its plus size tights. To highlight how stretchy the hosiery is, one model can be seen standing in one leg while another pulls a pair of tights all the way over her entire body. We don't have that to show you, but it's there it is. Uh, Shelley, what were they thinking? What were they thinking? Here's a tip, uh, advertisers. Let's not use skinny girls to promote fat girls because you know what? It's actually just going to make everyone feel bad. We have plus size models. It is nothing to be ashamed about. And I think, you know, this is actually bordering on like being mean and teasing and mm -hmm. I think that they just didn't think this through and they should have as soon as someone complained removed it but they didn't no you, you sort of it's surprising isn't it to see that, that it got that far Are oh you... absolutely and the thing is like apparently this similar campaign was used elsewhere and immediately taken down but I just don't think that they were being sensitive to people who are plus size I think that at any time you know we got to remember we live in a fat phobic um, society and that we should be taking care of people's feelings yeah I agree Jess on the flip side at least the company have got global publicity out of it Oh, I mean, yeah, they certainly did that. I don't know if it's the kind of publicity that, that you, you want. want. I mean, no. you know, I guess if you're trying to sell, if your objective is to sell tights to, to women who need plus size tights, then I don't understand how uh, sort of, as the, the word that you use, Shelley, teasing is so accurate, teasing mm. or offending or hurting these people, how that even economically is a good decision. Uh, I mean, I guess overall, if, if, if they just wanted to raise the awareness of the website in general, they've certainly done that. So maybe that's uh, the method in their madness. Yeah, yeah, but it's raised awareness that I will never, ever buy anything from them, yeah. from them ever again. That's, yeah, that's so, true. Yes. Yeah. When they say any publicity is good publicity, it's not correct yeah. in that in this in this circumstance is it no way okay finally how's your christmas shopping going ladies <sighs> It's not. <laughs> not very well. Well, I've barely started and every year I get present anxiety trying to figure out what to buy all of my family and friends. So yeah. perhaps this year I'll do what the Queen does. Every year Her Royal Highness buys the same present for all of her 550 odd staff and it's a voucher. Shelley, what do you think? Is this lazy or is just, no. this, it's just smart? The Queen is a genius. I mean, it's 550 staff. A voucher is exactly what she should be getting. But could, how she, could she possibly know what they wanted? The thing that's interesting mm. about this, though, is the longer you've been working for her, the more money you get in the voucher. Yeah, so it's I think just that's like enough. the Royal family. Like, there's a hierarchy within. What do you think, Jess? Any tips on how to limit present anxiety? Oh, God, I'm the worst at this and I haven't started and I'm already feeling anxious just thinking about it. And I'm really bad with advice because one year I was like, I'm going to be really smart. I'm going to do it all online. And then all the presents arrived and they look nothing like the pictures in the websites. And then other years I've gone racing around the shops and turned into the crazy Christmas lady because I get so frazzled with it all. So, look, I can see the appeal with the vouchers. It keeps everything nice and simple but I don't know does it do you do you lose a little bit of the magic yeah guys we'll have to leave it there thank you so much for today thank you and thanks for joining us up next the afternoon news